And now, The Rise Above Show, presented by Roofing.com and hosted by Diego Dante. Welcome to The Rise Above Show, presented by Roofing.com. My name is Diego Dante, and we are here today with my good friend Jeff Boab of Rhino Strategic Solutions. How are you, man? Diego, man, it's Friday. I've been on the road for like the last six weeks, so I am glad to be home and glad to be sitting here with you on the podcast. And and home is uh, Virginia Beach, is that right? Yep, live in Virginia Beach, but recently I've been in Dallas and Vegas and Orlando and Philly. We've been kind of crazy all over the place, so it's nice to be home for a couple of days before getting back on a plane next week and going back to Vegas. There you go. We had you at, uh, obviously you were at RoofCon, you came out to the Utah retreat with us. You've been to Tennessee with us. So you've done a fair bit of traveling with us as well. So we always appreciate you having you, man. Um, I know y'all hosted one of the best VIP parties in, in the industry at RoofCon. What, uh, and you guys are coming back this year. So that's exciting, man. I I will have you. Yeah, we, we've been to a lot of roofing shows and I've shared with your team before, like, I really appreciate the intentionality of that show. Uh, the brotherhood, just the organization that you guys had, the attention to detail. And yeah, of course, the party was nice. I mean, the party was great. Uh, We had the Rhino VIP party. We had the Rhino VIP room. uh, And it was really nice to see everybody after, you know, a couple days of sitting through breakouts and keynotes to kind of let their hair down and get to know people on a personal level. Uh, So, you know, kudos to you guys and RoofCon. It's honestly one of the best shows that we've ever attended. Well, kudos to you guys too, because I see you guys everywhere <laughs> and you guys are obviously out there hustling, killing it. I, even at, uh, at RoofCon, I feel like Chris was just, I don't know how many podcasts Chris filmed at, uh, at RoofCon, but I feel like he's still putting out the episodes from RoofCon. Um, but so Chris's podcast, I mean the, the Rhino podcast is to the point, right? To the point. Home and services. it's. It's a pretty, it's a big deal. I mean, it's, you guys have, it, you said it was like 19th marketing podcast in the world or something. It, what, what's the, the statistics on that? So I hope Chris doesn't hear this and get a bigger head than he has, but <laughs> uh, no, Chris does a phenomenal job with the podcast and it's currently up to number 18 uh, for marketing podcasts. So super proud of it. You know, Chris does a phenomenal job. He really gets some great guests on the show. And I think we did four or five of those uh, at RoofCon. Aaron Christie, John Dye, the Brookins Brothers, uh, Paul Reed, Roofers in Recovery. And I'm probably missing one. But like we had a really action-packed group on there and the podcasts were great. I think we just released uh, Aaron Christie's podcast, uh, Indie Roof Company. So that one was definitely a great one to watch. Yeah, it's awesome, man. So let's talk, you know, with with you, you are the VP of sales. Is that right? VP of sales at Rhino, yes. How, How long have you been there? I've been there almost two years now. Sweet. And so... Let's, you know, talk a little bit of, uh, you know, as far as a qualifier for you guys, I think you guys, um, I, I've seen a lot of the work that you guys have done. I think you guys put out really solid, uh, you guys are obviously, you know, kind of an all in one solution for marketing. Um, and, and I've seen some of the websites y'all are building for contractors. I think you guys are doing a phenomenal job. Um, uh, I guess my, my question would be, you know, for contractors, what can contractors start doing now if they're not at the point that they can hire out a rhino, but they, they want to get there, right? So so people, they, if they're starting out, they want to say, hey, a year down the road, whatever it looks like, right? Like, I want to work with rhino. Maybe I'm not there yet, whatever that looks like. H- how do we get to the point where we do that? What are those things that contractors can start doing now so that they can hire out a, a marketing company to take over? That's a really great question. One of the reasons that we got in the space was uh, we've been in the trades for 14 years. We only work with trades companies and we've been super successful on the HVAC plumbing electrical side. And we came out and uh, to a revolt retreat, met you guys and then went to IRE and said, wow, there's really an opportunity in this space to edify, educate and build that brotherhood like we had on the other side of the aisle. So 
here's some things that before you hire a marketing company, Rhino or anyone that you could be doing. Uh, one is great content from a you know social media standpoint. I want to give a shout out to David Taggart, uh, the Roof Poppy, also Revolt member. He, if you haven't followed him on social media, does a great job really branding himself on social media. And he's got a great following. So he's not only edifying the industry, he's picking up people on social media that he might not have never found before. So that's one of the first things that you can start doing. And it's free. Everybody's got a cell phone, right? Um, also, everyone wants to be a quasi podcaster, right, Diego? Uh, so he does a really great job of putting out that video content and putting it on different platforms. So uh, you want to get that on Facebook. You want to get it on Instagram. And another thing that you can do for free is start a YouTube channel. So kids nowadays, if they're watching TV, typically they're watching YouTube. And it's also the second largest search engine in the world. Another fun fact is Google, uh, Google owns YouTube. A lot of people don't know that, but they do. So when you're doing that, none of it costs any money. Uh, you're also building SEO quality uh, and backlinking through your website. So websites can be done fairly cheap to start. You know, there are even some free platforms out there that you can use uh, if you can't afford a professional website. So you can start doing that. Uh, another thing that you could be doing is uh, there are folks that write their own blogs, right? So things FAQ related. So blogs are easy. They're not expensive to write. Uh, you could even have a ghostwriter do them for you. There are plenty of blogging companies, but typically people, uh, homeowners are going to ask questions, right? Those questions that you're typically going to get, write FAQs or blogs uh, around those. So couple of things. One, it's going to improve your SEO quality. Two, uh, you can be found when people are typing in those type of questions. Uh, that content, the blogging that you've done can be indexed by Google. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing, the uh, Google business profile, formerly known as Google My Business, is another one. Super easy to update, make changes to, add uh, pictures, content, link back to your website, reviews, all of those things. So there's some things immediately that you could do. Uh, and then you could consider things like Nextdoor app or Thumbtack, right? Those are not the most high quality customer all the time, but it's an easy barrier of entry into the space uh, that if you're watching your pennies, right? If you're watching your budget that you could get into. So if you, if you start doing those things, you start to should uh, gain traction from a from an eyeball standpoint on the video space, uh, getting that YouTube channel uh, recorded and set up, and then you know the Google My Business. Uh, so again, tie that into your social presence. Uh, we've recently partnered with Joe Hughes at Contractor Dynamics. We're super excited about that. Uh, so he has some really amazing uh, trainings and courses on the social side and he can get you set up there and then we're we can help you on the do it for you marketing side so there are some things that you can get started with right away let's talk about the uh your joe hughes partnership so joe's a good friend of ours been on the show like he, we we love joe hughes we love you guys what's that partnership look like what are you guys what are you guys doing with uh what's i guess what are you trying to accomplish with this partnership yeah, I really love Joe and Elizabeth, uh, great partners. And what we decided when we got into the space was like, we like to play really nice with everybody because what the industry needs is more educators, right? Not necessarily gurus and people that help you make a million dollars in 10 minutes and things like that, but they really need educators that can help you sustain long-term business plans. So when we got on the space and started looking around, Rhino does social media and we do it really well, but we found that, you know, uh, Joe and team and Elizabeth were super well respected in the space. Uh, they have a great following and they have a really great product offering. So we said, well, why don't we just pair or team with contractor dynamics and we'll let them do the social side of it and we'll do it the do it for you uh, marketing side of it. So instead of us trying to gobble up everything, we thought let's partner. Uh, both of our names are going to bring some recognition, um, some branding in the industry. And we just thought that, you know, 
by pairing us both together, we'd be much stronger than if we tried to do it separately. I love Joe's approach on social media to, um, to your point, because, um, he, he is a great educator and what you can learn from this as a contractor is, you know, I, I used to, uh, sell roofs. <laughs> and I remember when I first started, it was, the, the same thing that I see all day on social media. We're out on, uh, you know, we're out uh, inspecting roofs today. Give us a call if you want us to inspect your roofs. And after a couple times that you do that, the algorithm is just going to bury it. No one's going to see it. Versus what I what I started learning from from people like Joseph Hughes and for people that have been doing it, you know, a lot longer was. You know, we I, there's guys that start. Uh, I've seen like Dylan Mullins posted a a uh, photo or, or a video of how an ice dam is created on the roof and why after it snows you got to get that taken care of so that you don't create leaks in the future uh, or things like that. That y you're not pitching at all. You're just you are the roofer that is letting them know, hey, if you don't do this, you're gonna have a leak and. It, never pitched it at all and you know in his content and when you do that it's so much more valuable to the homeowner and and that's truly what brings in more um you know more more eyeballs to you in in the long run so so i always appreciated joe i always appreciate joe because he's in the same sense he's you'll never see him pitch contractor dynamics and if you're looking at just the way he does business, it's it's purely educational. So, you know, dissect that if you're a contractor and figure out, you know, how you can take his strategy and and use that to to sell roofs. You know, I think it's a great strategy. Can I charge Joe for the plug that we're going to give him on this that we have given him on this podcast? Just shoot him an invoice. Shoot an invoice. Uh, but to piggyback on that, uh, I agree. Like everyone knows that you do roofs and inspections and things like that. And you help with insurance work. Like that's not a game changer. What you want to do and what Joe and others have done in the industry and good marketers do is what are people asking you when they call in, right? What are their questions? What are their concerns? What are their hesitations? And then you want to build content around that because if you can do that, then people feel like they know you when they're calling you, they know, what you're there to do. You've answered questions. They know what your process is, right? Like one of the biggest pain points with uh, homeowners is like people that have come in and wrecked their house, right? Roofers that have left nails and trash and killed my shrubs. So create content around like the best case scenario. When we come out to your house, how we're, we're tarping your, you know, your, vegetation around your house. We're not going to mess up your landscaping. You know, if we have to come into your house to talk to you, we're going to wear, you know, booties or whatever. Like those are the things that are going to be a differentiator, not like, Hey, we're up on your roof today. And it looks like you got a piece of hail that hit it. Well, I understand that, you know, a piece of hail did hit it. So, you know, you want to do all the things that people are asking you, right. And then you want to create helpful videos around those things. So, when people go and they consume your content, whether it's video content or written content on your website, they're like, yes, this roofing company, Diego's roofing company is answering all the questions that I had in my mind and all the concerns that I have. And I feel really good about calling them. And when I call them, I already feel half connected to Diego because I've seen his video content. I've seen his written content. I actually feel like I know him versus companies that say, hey, we do asphalt shingles. We work with GAF. We work with Owens Corning. Well, that's not, that's not any of the concerns that I had when I called you. It's, can you do these, these things? So those type of marketers that are showing, Hey, we're here for you, but we're not trying to sell you anything. Here's the educational piece of it. Those are people that are disrupting the marketplace right now and taking market share. Yeah. For... Let's, uh, let's chat a little bit about uh we talked we talked about the creating content piece a minute ago uh, and one of the things that you said was um 
that basically everyone can start a podcast, everyone can start a YouTube channel. This is something that I've been talking about with some people recently of people think that they need all of this equipment and all of these things to be able to go out and, and start creating content. And really the, the people that I see that are making some of the biggest impact are literally some of these guys that are, that are just posting on their phones and it's, they're just going live on Facebook. It's just the fact that they have an infectious personality and you know, you pick up uh, a program like this. We're going on StreamYard right now. You, it's like 200 bucks, got a hundred dollar microphone, like super cheap on the, you know, for us to be able to start something like this. And, and, and really like we have William, we have, you know, the, we have a, a production space to be able to, to create really high quality content, but anyone can start doing something like this. Don't, don't let the, you know, not having a, a studio, not having, uh, a really nice camera, not having this or that keep you from start put, you know, from putting out content because putting out that content consistently, right. Being relentless about how much stuff you're putting out there. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to go back this. I swear this is the last time I'm going to refer to Joe Hughes, <laughs> but Joe is posting every single day, like multiple times a day as well. Right. This is going to be like the we're, we're dissecting the way Joe Hughes does business podcast. But um, but to my my whole point in that was, you know, being relentless about how much stuff you're putting out there. Uh, I think you guys do a great job of that as well um, with, you know. I, I see you guys, like I said, just posting stuff all the time. And and I think that's something that contractors can learn from that. Um Let's chat a little bit about, we've got all of these companies that are in our inboxes every day trying to sell us leads, right? So I feel like the, the number of marketing companies is endless. How do we know that we're working with a good company? And how do we keep the companies that we do hire accountable if we don't know about marketing? That's a great question. And shout out to uh, Tim Brown, Eric Richardson, and others for all the roofing memes that we've seen recently on the Facebook groups. That has been phenomenal. So uh, here's some ways that you can hold your marketing uh, companies accountable. One is you've got to be in your analytics every single month, right? So one of the things that Rhino is a huge believer in is live listening to all the phone calls that come in. So we put call tracking numbers on every single campaign that we run. So we want to make sure that if we're running an SEO and a PPC campaign or social or Google guarantee that we know what's specifically coming in on that number so we can track it. You can't have it on your business cards. You can't have it on your trucks, any of that stuff, because we want to be able to show a company like here's the leads that your company generated by word of mouth, by yard signs, by your truck wrap, uh, by maybe somebody that you go to church with, all of those things. But here's the leads from your marketing dollars, what we're uh, attracting for you. Because a lot of companies take everything that comes in and because they can't differentiate, they say, oh, your cost per lead was this low. And it's deceiving because it's really not. That's taking into account some of the hard work and equity that you've already put into the business. Uh, with all that stuff that you're going to bring in regardless. So we live listen to the calls to be able to tell you a lot of things. Was it a repair call? Was it an installation call? If you've got CSRs, what are their booking rates for repairs, installations, right? It's easy if someone's got a, if their roof is leaking, right? Those That's an easy book, right? Can you come out? Yes, we can. Should be 100%. But what if people are calling with questions and objections, uh, or calling for other companies by mistake. Can your CSRs turn those around? So we're going to show you some trending on who's answering the phone, what their booking rates are, and then what cities was it coming from? You know, most people serve multiple cities, so we're going to be able to show you that. That's important when we start to target, you know, PPC dollars and where we go for SEO. Uh, then we're going to tell you, was it a mobile, a desktop, tablet visit? That's super important because... You've got to have a good organic uh, scoring website that's mobily friendly because the tablet searches and mobile searches 
are different than your desktop searches, right? So we're going to tie all those things in together for you. So a lot goes into it to be able to say, you know, you give us X amount of dollars and here's our X return. So every month we meet with uh, the business owner or the marketing person to go over those statistics every single month. Uh, all the phone calls that's come in, the trending, if they're missing phone calls, a lot of business owners don't know like, hey, you generated two, 200 phone calls, but you missed 27 of them. Did you know that, you know, 12, 15 percent of your calls are being missed currently? And in roofing, imagine turning 20 percent of those into jobs like that's a lot of money going out the door that you've done such a good job from content, from blogging, from social media presence, from SEO, PPC, getting them in the door and you're just missing. So all of those things you should be holding your marketing company accountable to along with that monthly meeting. They're super crucial. Uh, you know, one of the challenges I've seen in the roofing space is people have been slow to adapt technology and marketing. And I tell people all the time, Google is the way to go. Even if they're coming from when you're door knocking, when you're out there in storms or when you're dealing with insurance companies, they're still going to Google you. And if your website doesn't provide that comfortability, that security, answer the questions like we talked about before that people have, then they're on Google. They're going to have other choices, right? So it's not only to drive leads into your website, but it's also to protect the customer base that you currently have and the word of mouth referral, uh, realtor business that you're getting, home inspectors, insurance companies. If you're not putting money into your digital, you're really missing the ball game right now. Let's talk about on Google specifically. We've got, you know, the, what are the different pieces of, you know, when, when you search for service on on Google and, you know, what uh, I guess is most important um, for you to focus on kind of, or, or the order of, you know, which you should start focusing on. So they're all important. First, it's going to be your website. Obviously, that's going to be the foundation of everything. Uh, you've got the four sections of Google, essentially. You've got uh, the Google Guarantee Ads or LSA, local service ads, at the top. Uh, they're typically in uh, square boxes. Then you've got the pay-per-click section, easy to denote because they say ad right next to it. Then uh, further down, you've got the, the map section, super important as well. And then you've kind of got the holy grail at the bottom, which is SEO or search engine optimization. Now, they all work together. Everything is super important. The website and how it converts is going to be the main thing. Uh, the SEO is very important because that uh, kind of regulates your cost per click on the pay-per-click side. So it's just four different avenues into your business. One is not more important. One is not less important. You're going to want to make sure that you're relevant on all of those things. And a lot of people get focused on one or two, but it's like having four roads into your city and only saying, I want to be relevant on two and these other two, I don't care. Uh, you're going to want to be everywhere for people to give them options because some people are inclined to use maps. I've never once ever used a map, the map section. That's just me. I'm more inclined to click a pay-per-click ad. Uh, and I have my own rationale behind that. But That's all funny because I'm the other way around. <laughs> you want to the map, right? Yeah, I go straight to the map. That's the first thing I do. So I would say a lot of times younger people are more inclined to use that map section, right? But currently, uh, I believe the customer base or your more influent, uh, affluential people are going to be using ads and SEO. Uh, you know, reviews is another thing. I bet you're probably big on reviews. Younger folks are, I feel like Diego's my kid on this one, but uh, younger folks are very review oriented, right? I've been around forever. I'm not that review oriented because you're going to have one person that says Diego's roofing company is the best thing ever. You're going to have another one that says it's the worst thing ever. How do, how do you distinguish? I feel like the more important thing for me would be how many reviews they have. Um, I was looking at, it's funny because what I do a lot is I'll go through the different revolt members mm -hmm. and I'll search what they do in their area a lot just to try to see how they rank with everything else. Um, and I looked up 
um, we have a few revolt members in Indianapolis and I looked up roofers in Indianapolis and Aaron Christie's was one of the first ones that popped up, which was great. But the thing that impressed me was he has like close to a thousand reviews on there and his companies, they're not new, but they're, you know, they're like three, four years old. Right. Yeah. Um, which I thought was extremely impressive. And if I'm looking for a contractor, uh, for me, that was a big thing. Again, to your point, like obviously not everyone, you're not going to please everyone. So maybe looking into the, you know, what every review says isn't maybe the most important thing as, as much as for me, the, the quantity of, of reviews. And I was thinking about that because I think they have a really good strategy of, you know, they, uh, strategy for getting reviews. They make sure that every single person that they talk to, they're getting a review out of. Right. And so that's a huge thing for contractors is often overlooked. Right. Even if, you know, you're going to to a home and you're not getting a roof out of it. How do you still generate a review from that? Because that's going to help you out tremendously. You know, uh, create a plan for that and execute on that and, and reward your your reps that are doing a great job with that. Yeah. Uh, it, and it just shows you like everyone uses Google very differently. And now you've got Google business profile, which I also believe appeals to the younger generation where they don't want to go to a whole website. They just want to get the quick, dirty facts. And now because the Google business profile is so robust, there's another avenue into your business, right? It's like, what do I do? Like Google business profile, website reviews, like uh, and but they all tie into each other. And it's super important to be relevant everywhere because uh, eyeballs are everywhere. We talked about YouTube. I mean, I don't know what TikTok is going to bring the industry, but TikTok is a thing. So I don't think they've figured out the uh, monetization of it currently, but they will because, you know, they have all the eyeballs and it's the fastest growing social media presence on the Internet currently. So there's another thing that you're going to have to tie in and will will Google respect that as a trusted backlink? I don't know. They're in competition with them. So there's a lot of things that are, you know, to your point, uh, what people look at, but we're all different. And again, I'm not a Google business profile user. I'm not a map user and um, I'm a creature of habit. So I'm I'm pretty much clicking on pay-per-click ads or I'm going to go to SEO and I'm going to consume content when I come to the site. Like that's the whole purpose I'm there is I want to do a little bit of research. And again, the reviews are actually comical to me. I'll go read them sometimes for comedy relief. Uh, I like to go on vacation a lot as some of the revolt members like to give me a hard time about, but uh, the reason I think re uh, reviews are so funny is like, you'll pick a, the, the couples retreat for instance, and for revolt, if you look at the resort you'll see a lot of people say, this is the best resort we've ever been to in our entire lives. And we're going to bring our family, their friends. And for generations, we're going to come back to this resort, right? Then you'll see people that say, hey, look, this was the worst experience I ever had. And if this hotel blew over tomorrow, I would not be disappointed. They gave me a margarita and it was it was 80% uh, full. So, like so one star. Problems, right? So... You know, I'm not a big believer in that. But again, uh, there is a big place for that because even on the social side, if you look at Facebook, right, you'll see a lot of people say, hey, looking for a roofer in Virginia Beach or Greenville, South Carolina, or looking for a, um, you know, coffee shop or new restaurant. So reviews and uh, asking of information for reviews is super powerful. And it's somewhere that you've got to be. So uh, generating those reviews, a lot of great companies out there. You can do it through your field management software. There's third party companies, but you should be doing that because also that's super important for Google guaranteed LSA ads as well. One, one more thing I want to ask you about. Um, I think one of the things that you're really great at, and this is why I want to uh, ask you about this is on the business development side what are obviously a lot of contractors, especially when they're starting out, will will rely a lot on door knocking. And not to say, 
I'm I always every time I start talking about door knocking, I know I'm gonna get either some people that are gonna turn this off or are gonna. This is just my personal opinion. If you're listening, in my the, when I was doing roofing, I said to myself, I'm gonna door knock for the first 90 days, and my goal is to stop door knocking after 90 days. Um, for some people, that's their sustainable business model, and and that's great if that's what what you're all about. Um, but I feel like there's a big opportunity with with business development and strategic relationships um, to to be able to to generate business as a contractor, teaming up with doing the BNI groups, doing the uh, trade shows, doing the um, you know all all these. Uh, partnerships with with agents, with r- realtors and insurance agents, right? So I know you've, you know, you were, uh, you know, you you're obviously really big uh, business development person. So as a contractor, what are some of the business development things that are often overlooked or that uh, contractors need to, you know, start doing to be able to generate business that that's going to things that are going to generate business long term by uh, doing business development. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And I also have nothing against door knocking. However, I don't think it's a sustainable, uh, business plan, right? Because some of the challenges are when someone, we're going to get so roasted in the comments here, but go ahead. I know it's okay. (laughs) I I've, I've said this to everyone that would listen about door knocking one. I'm a believer in it. However, me as a customer, you would miss me. I'm never going to answer my door. I don't, I don't care if you have $1 million and you're going to hand it to me. You're not going to hand it to me because I'm not answering my door. Uh, Even if I do happen to mistakenly answer my door, I'm going to close it and say, thank you very much. Not interested. Even before you tell me anything about your company. However, there are a lot of super successful people that do it as part of an overall strategy. The challenge with door knocking becomes like one, People don't like to do it long term. That's the biggest thing. You just mentioned that. Two, when I become really great at door knocking, which is not many people, but when I do, what's the next thing that I'm going to be thinking in my mind? Why am I door knocking for Diego when I could be door knocking for myself, right? So I think that's that's a challenge, right? But it's got to be part of uh, a strategy. And you know, Kenny does a great job teaching door to door uh, strategy. So there's a little plug for Kenny with Revolt uh, in the Be Real course. But uh, it's got to be part of an overall strategy. And so some things that people could be doing are uh, little, you know, we have Zoom now, like do seminars for real estate agents, for property management companies. You mentioned BNI, right? Go to churches and, you know, uh, offer your services, right? You know, for areas that you're in and you have established customers, uh, anything, and we talked about this earlier, anything informational becomes valuable. Anything where you're not trying to sell somebody today, it can't be transactional, right? Because people can sniff that out, you know, not trying to sell a roof today, but when you're in of need of a roofing service, right? We want to be the trusted professional, so I think that you start branding yourself as the trusted you know, roofing professional in your area, reaching out to all of these groups, offering your service, right? Coming out to speaking to groups, um, sponsoring little league teams, being involved in the community, things that you think would not bring, you know, immediate, you know, turnaround in business. But then people are going to say, oh, you should call, you know, David or Diego or Jeff, you know, because they're they're the roofing guys in the community. So. I'm big on that side. Rhino is as well. We we never call anybody. So everyone w- would call us through a, dis- a strategic partnership, somebody we met through Revolt or, you know, going to RoofCon or things like that. I'm just a big believer in putting out the education um, and then it's going to come back to you tenfold. I love it. All right, man. Well, this is the Rise Above show. And in the spirit of rising above... I have a series of rapid fire questions that I ask everyone at the end of the show. Oh, and it. so I'm going to put you on the spot and, and we'll, well, so the first, my first rapid fire question is what is a, an experience in your life where you've had a failure? It could be business or personal. And how were you able to rise above? Mm, great question. So, when I first started in sales many, many, many years ago, uh, 
I thought I knew everything. I'm like, I know how to sell. I'm going to come in and just kill it and be president of the company probably in three weeks or so once they realize how great I am. But little did I know that sales is much like anything in life, that you have to prepare, you have to have a process, you have to perfect your craft, right? And then you have to be coached. You have to be willing to be coached. So when I first started, I, I failed tremendously because the company provided the training, the mentorship, all the ongoing uh, coaching that I needed, but I didn't take it. So about a year into it, my boss came to me and said, hey, look, uh, I really like you and I can see that you're trying hard, but you're doing it all the wrong way. We've been trying to coach you, so we're probably going to let you go. And they did. And it was really a wake up call for me at the time to say, hey, look, I don't know anything. I really don't even know mostly what I should be doing at this point. So I'm going to find a company, plug into a successful uh, way of doing things that I don't have to reinvent the wheel. And then I'm going to, I'm going to be open to ongoing coaching and I'm not going to take it as criticism, right? In the world that we live in today, it's really weird that if you try to help somebody, they almost think that you're criticizing them, which really allows you not to get better. So, um, I, I picked myself up. It was very hurtful to my, my ego at the time. And I became humble and said, Hey, look, I'm going to, I'm going to tag along with you because you've been successful. You've developed a system. I don't need to do it myself. And that really helped me kind of catapult myself in sales at that point. I love it, man. That's great. Um, I think a lot of the times we're, we're in different spectrums of that. Right. And so figuring out if, if you feel like you've got it all figured out, sometimes it's maybe we need to reevaluate where we're at. And, um, so I appreciate you sharing that story. My, my second rapid fire question is how will you know that you have succeeded in business? Wow. Um, that's a tough one. Like that's a lot, that's not even rapid fire. That's like all day fire. But I, I think essentially we're, people are comfortable with you, not only as a kind of a, a business advisor, but a friend. And the fact that they, they feel deep down that you're different than everyone else and you're there to help them, right? There's plenty of money to be made in the world and in marketing and things like that. And that will come. I'm, I'm kind of a big believer in the Zig Ziglar approach of if you help enough people get what they want, you're going to automatically get what you want. So I, I've been in this space a long time. I really just try to be there for people, give them good advice, whether it be on the rhino side or just business in general. Uh, and I feel like if they're happy with me and tell other people that I've been successful. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, I had a, it's funny. I feel like the best advice I ever got was from the realtor that sold us our first house when I was 22, 23. And he said to me, he said, I'm retired. He, he's, he was talking about how he just loves helping people. He's like, and just by default, he just gets a good paycheck out of it. But, and I remember such a simple thing that he, you know, he taught me that, but it stuck with me my whole life of just, I, just go out and help people. And obviously be smart about, you know, the avenues that you have to help people. But, but, uh, if you're helping people, the, the money will come, you know? Um, so I, I love that. Uh, my last rapid fire question is what is a book that's changed your life? Ooh, well, I know everyone like, you know, that was asked uh, a couple months ago in the roofing and solar community on the Facebook groups. And I'll give my same answer. Uh, it's different than most people would probably give. It's the Bible for me. Uh, you know, I think it's got everything that you would need to regulate yourself professionally, personally, how to run a business, how to conduct yourself, right? How you want your reputation to be, how to treat people, uh, how to serve people really because business ownership and being successful is really just about serving other people. Uh, so for me, it's the Bible and my relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, and then, you know, anything on servant leadership, I really dig, right? Because I think really people have it the exact opposite where they're trying to serve their own interests, their business, their pocketbooks, right? Uh, 
getting the best car or house, all those things. And to your point, those could come, maybe, maybe not, uh, if you're serving other people. So for me, it's been the Bible. You know, I've read, look, I've read a gazillion books in my life, John Maxwell, Zig Ziglar. Um, you know, we just, uh, Traction, just recently read Traction and EOS. So there's a lot of great books out there. But for me to keep myself, uh, you know, humble and understanding how to serve people and be a better person, it's the Bible for me. I appreciate it, man. Well, let me ask you, we've gotten to the end of the show. Okay. Can I ask you my, can I ask you my controversial last question? Oh, I would love it. All right. So my controversial last question is, I tie this into the industry that each person is in. So for you, let's say marketers, I'll, I'll put you in that, in that, in that bubble, right? What's the thing that marketers are doing wrong? So I think the thing that marketers are doing wrong is they're telling people what they want to hear, right? We have a lot of people that come to us and like, Hey, look, I want to blow my business up you know, from a million to 5 million this year, can I do it with like $1,200 a month? <laughs> and they'll say yes. And I'll tell people like, Hey, no offense, but I, I think I might spend $1,200 a month at Dunkin' Donuts. So you probably can't use my Dunkin' Donuts budget and grow your business by fivefold. So I think, you know, the biggest challenge that I see is uh, burning people, right? Because they know that business owner is desperate for business growth and leads and, you know, just taking off and they give them these unreal realistic expectations. And then they don't give them any accountability, like the tracking that we talked about. So they're giving them this $1,200 a month and maybe they can afford it. Right. Uh, and the marketing agency knows that they can afford to probably burn twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 a month without, you know, getting results. And they're still going to be fairly happy. So it's, really doing that. So I think it's important that you're honest with people based on what their expectations are and what you can do. So we don't ever want to be in that space of not telling people the truth. I love it. Well, Jeff, we appreciate you coming on the show. We appreciate your uh, constant support for us at RoofCon with Revolt, with all the things we're always doing. We know you guys are always... Um, there for us. And so we, we appreciate the partnership we have with you guys. And, and I guess the last thing I'm going to ask you is if someone wants to connect with you, where do they, where do they go? If they want to find out more about Rhino or want to just connect with you, where, where can they find you? Yeah. So if you want to see some funny memes, obviously you can find me on Facebook uh, or anything about food or sports. Uh, check me out on Facebook. Uh, or Photoshopped images of everyone with your face on it or Ammon's face on it. So um, I can neither confirm nor deny any of that, but uh, you can find me. Uh, you can jboab at rhinoss.com. You can email me. Even if you want to text me, my phone number is 757 510 2671. Connect anyway. Facebook is super easy. LinkedIn, any of that good stuff. But uh, Diego, I want to thank you. Roofcon, roofing.com, the podcast. You guys have all been phenomenal. We definitely appreciate the partnership and everything that's come out of it. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Well, guys, if you've tuned in this far, we really appreciate it. And we'll catch you guys next time on the next episode of the Rise Above Show presented by roofing.com. Peace out. <laughs>